not liking what's happening here. You don't like that he's the dictator of a team he doesn't own? Interesting. Go on. I don't like the fact that you just handpicked your podcast partner as your coach and your son is your new running mate. What makes this not dope is the fact that Bronny making it to the league is now tainted because it was his dad who brought in there. I don't have any issues with Bronny James. Seems like a sweet kid. It's gotta be tough to grow up in that shadow. My issue is this never felt like Bronny's dream. This is LeBron's dream. And you're telling me the kid that had heart failure couldn't have maybe had another year or two in college to marinate, to get better, to get stronger, to get bigger, to get good. Instead, why is he being rushed out? Ask yourself, because somebody's on a timeline. So here we are rushing this so that we can have some weird, dumb, contrived moment in history that I frankly don't care about. Hey. You, yeah, you guys are on mute. Do y'all feel that Bron selfishly moved Bronny early to the league for his legacy and not actually for Bronny's dream? It's an interesting point. I mean, I never thought of it like that, but I'd like to say no. I think like Bronny always had this dream to make it to the league and all that stuff. But definitely the dream of them playing together got sped up, you know, a little faster than you would have liked. I mean, I do agree he should have stayed maybe another year or two to kind of develop a little bit. But also he's going to be able to develop in the G League this year. So he's got a fully guaranteed contract. Um, he's not going to really be asked to play meaningful minutes for the Lakers. So it's almost like a paid – it's like he's playing in college, basically, with the G League team. So he's getting that year to develop in the pros. You know, he doesn't have to worry about school. He's get He gets to focus solely on basketball. So, but, I mean, it is an interesting point that she made about um, them rushing the timeline a little bit. Because, yeah, Bron, he signed the two-year deal. I feel like at the end of the two years, he's probably going to – I mean, he can – re-up maybe one year deals after that but he's gonna be like what 41 42 this is not it hasn't really been done before i don't know his drive to keep playing into his 40s like what are you competing with tom brady or or what because it's not really there's not much else he can do in the nba and i don't know if he has it in him to keep going through it like this i mean he's going to be relied on heavily this year for the Lakers. I mean, they, they haven't really done anything in free agency. I'm getting ahead of the, you know, the episode timeline. So let me, let me quit while I'm ahead, but um, seeing Bronny make to league and go to the Lakers. It was, it was great. It was great to see. Um, yeah. I mean, me, I think the reason why we didn't have that thought about Bronny in the first place is because you're not Michelle Beadle. Michelle Beadle has a, has a ax to pick, uh, ax to grind with, LeBron and she comes out and says that and look she even said she doesn't care about the whole storyline she was like yeah, you know what I mean like she clearly is still upset about the whole LeBron thing and we know we know she said that he got her fired she claims that LeBron got her fired from ESPN or whatever um and so look I'm not gonna deny that or whatever I don't know what happened um but regardless of that you know she clearly has she's coming from a bias standpoint all right she has a bias against LeBron everyone everyone's bias against in their own way um but I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I get a kick out of this. I think, yes, Bronny could have used the time in college for sure and had more time to develop as a player. But I also feel like, look, who, who better than LeBron James to know what's best for his kid when it comes to basketball? We're we going to sit here and act as if we know more better than him. We know better than he does. If that guy wants to develop and, and learn how to play basketball at a high level, he should learn how to play basketball in the, NBA, in the NBA's style of play. Right. And we we all know it's different. It's not like playing in college. All right. So Michelle Beadle doesn't know that. Michelle Beadle don't know that. She don't watch enough basketball to know that. And I'm I'm gonna put bet my bottom dollar on that. I bet my savings account on that shit that she's not watching the game in that way to understand, right? 
hey, like the college game, the college game is different. It's not spaced out. Guards aren't asked to guards don't have the same level of responsibility that I'm asked to make reads on every single play. They're not playing out a pick and roll every single time down the floor. Right. They're not running side pick and rolls in college the same way. There's more post touches. So the floor is condensed. They got two bigs on the floor. You don't understand that kind of stuff. So. Bronny being the athlete that he is, being the defender that he is, his job is going to be to guard in space and make reads at a pick and roll. We're better to, to learn how to do that than even the G League, right? I think they all knew they were all realistic. They just wanted him to get a fully guaranteed deal. I think there are ways, there are there are definitely aspects of this where LeBron definitely flexed his power to get Bronny certain benefits that a 55th pick that generally does not get. That's a fact. We, we don't have to sit here and not, that's not true. Okay, a fully guaranteed contract for a 55th pick is not something that happens. Okay, but at the end of the day, I have no problem with it. I got no problem with it. I see Tone's about to say something. Well, Just to give for our listeners, our viewers that watches or are watching this now, we got a couple people in the chat. Specifically with Rich Paul clients, every second round pick that he's had under clutch has mm-hmm. gotten fully guaranteed contracts. This is yeah. nothing new concerning with Bronny. And last year, I forget the player's name. But he had like the highest paid ever fully guaranteed contract for a second round pick under clutch. So this is probably Livingston. New. You said what? It's probably that guy Livingston from um Kentucky, probably him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is nothing new from Rich Paul and Clutch, but go ahead. Yeah, that all the all the more reason, right? So we can sit here and act as if like this is all he's a Nepo baby and all that stuff. I'm not saying that he isn't. I'm not gonna sit here and say that he isn't. Okay, but I think to act like he doesn't have NBA traits and NBA abilities. It's crazy to me. I just don't really understand that aspect of it. He can definitely carve himself a role in the NBA and be an effective NBA player for a long time. When guys like JJ Redick say that, when Palinka says that, I don't think they're just fully BSing you. I really don't. I really don't think that. I really believe that he has a chance. He's a really good defender in space. Really great athlete. Can shoot the ball. Um, those there's things he can develop on and become a really good NBA player. Just off the bench and help you in, in spots, right? Like a Deuce McBride, like a you know a Drew Holiday is a lofty lofty goal that's a great player but yeah at, at his best you could be looking at a drew holiday situation for sure right if he buys in and he continues to get better and that kid has the right demeanor and the right um the right work ethic to definitely get to that place where he can become that kind of player i definitely believe that so um i don't have a concern about him long term he has the right work ethic the right you know natural disposition to be a great player in the nba and to sit here and to act like that's not his dream. It's Bron dream that he's putting on him, or he's rushing him out of college. Nah, I, listen. I don't think so. If you Savannah, we don't know her, but you see her. I just don't think she's going for that, man. I'm sorry. All right, it's the reason why Bron didn't try to leave LA again. Right? She's got some say in all this, and that's her son too. Right? So this idea that you, she would allow him to be rushed out of college just because Bron wants to play with him. I think that's ridiculous. I think it's assuming a whole lot about their family dynamic that you don't know. And I, I did, it's, it's crazy. And she made, she, made some other, she made some other comments that she said that were crazy too, like, oh, you know, ha, him being a dictator of, of a team he doesn't own. Uh, what great players haven't had a lot of control over the owners, over the team, right? Over team transactions in the last, in the modern day, in modern day basketball. When you're a great player, you have a lot of say. That's just normal. Anyways, you know, we can't listen to Michelle Shelby. It's all right. I know you're upset. I get it. I get it. It's all right. It's all right thing i'll say on this before we talk about free agency because i know a lot of y'all want to talk about free agency for this situation it boils down to me this a lot of this has nothing actually to do with Bronny. this is the disdain and hate for lebron james yes and if we look at any other facet in the world lowe's kmart target wendy's paris hilton and their family if you are in a position to put your children in a position to succeed in any other facet of the world, it happens. Bron is not the first person to do this. Bron is not in NBA alone. We've heard it before. A lot of people say Austin Rivers shouldn't have been in the league. He got in there because of his daddy. We've seen it. This is really about the hate for Bron. And honestly, in any other facet of the world, too, if you high up on the totem pole, you get say. You get say in the business. They'll reach out to you. Hey, do you think we should hire this person? You have you have a hand in hiring decisions. It's the same thing. He has a hand in hiring decisions. He is considered, arguably, 
however you want to view it, the greatest basketball player to ever touch the basketball court. You don't think he's going to have some say? <laughs> you don't think they're going, hey, what do you think we should do? He's known to have great basketball knowledge. You're not going to try to pick his brain. Do you think this will work? We know this is about you. Does, will this work with you and what you want to do? Does this, you know, help intensify and emphasize your skills, especially on the back end of your career? Like, come on, we need to stop. And then, and then this yeah, is then, really then, just, this is really just hate for Braun. Take the whole picture into it. Clearly it is, right? Because if you're being logical, have the Lakers done a good job running themselves lately? Like before Braun got there, what were they, what were they doing? Since Kobe's retirement, what have they done before Kobe retired? What have, they, what have they actually accomplished, right? What have they actually done well? What have they done the right way before Bron got there? They're, they're very lucky Bron even considered going there. They're lucky LeBron had it on his heart to go play for a uh, marquee franchise in sports. That's what he wanted to do. He said that was the biggest reason why I went to L.A. And, in, 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 of course, it don't hurt to live in L.A., right? But that's what it is. They're lucky he even came in the first place. So this idea that, like, you know – he shouldn't have control or he has too much control because it's not just Michelle Beadle saying that there's a lot of Lakers fans that feel that way. A lot of Lakers fans feel like they overpaid for Bron yesterday, it, which is absurd to me because there are so many nights, too many nights where he's your best player on the team. He's the best player on that team on the best player on the floor at that age. And you feel like you just overpaid for him. You're lucky he's still there. There were, there were, there were many teams in the NBA over the last week or so that would have paid him more or paid him just as much to have him come and play for them because they have a chance to win a championship and Bron stayed there. Should be happy. You'd be counting your lucky stars. But Lakers fans are they're weird. Lakers fans are weird, man. They really are. I I'll think people forget in this process too, he was willing to take a pay cut. I'm willing to take a pay cut. Yeah, I ain't do nothing. So I'm gonna get my money. Point blank period. That's what it right. boils down to. I was willing to take a pay cut. Bron, Bron was in a lose-lose situation. He take a pay cut and they don't win a championship. Oh, he dumb. He should have got his bag. He takes the bag. He's going to be blamed. Oh, he didn't do what he needed to do for the roster to get better. He was in a lose-lose situation regardless. Right. And the last thing I'll say regarding Bronny, Kobe said it best. I forego college. I, I decided not to go to college because we're better to actually improve my game than at the That's highest right. level. That's right. We don't see this anywhere else. You get a job, you don't. Hey, let me go continue to take college credits, even though I have an opportunity to intern with Rich Paul and his crew. I have an opportunity to intern with Wasserman Management Entertainment Group. Yep. Oh, no, I'm going to turn it down. No, like Miles said, it's basically Ronnie's going to pay an internship right now. Get better. And then once you do what you're supposed to do, you learn what you need to learn. You learn our system. You learn these things. Then you get to move up. We, we got a job lined up for you. He's on a paid internship. Point blank period. Hopefully he's able to actually get better and improve his game and have his own story at some point.